We say a function f from a domain a to a codomain b is surjective or onto if for every element b from the codomain there exists some element in the domain that the function maps to b. Thus, to prove that a function is surjective, we simply take an arbitrary element from the codomain and show that there is indeed some domain element that gets sent to that codomain element. We're going to prove that these four functions are surjective using that exact method. There are chapters in the description if you want to skip around the problems. Be sure to give them a try yourself before watching the solutions. Let's get into it. Here's our first problem. f of x equals x squared. Its domain is the real numbers and its codomain is the non-negative reals. Of course, not every real number gets hit by x squared, but certainly all the non-negative real numbers do. So this is a surjective function. To prove that, we begin by taking an arbitrary element, say y, from the codomain. So that's just an arbitrary, non-negative real number. Our task is to find some domain element x such that f of x is equal to y. Now, of course, f of x is x squared, so that means we need some domain element x so that x squared is equal to y. If x squared is equal to y, that means that x is equal to the square root of y. And there we go. That's precisely the domain element we need for our proof. Since y is a non-negative real number, we know the square root of y is a real number. That means it's in the domain of our function. The square root of a non-negative number is defined. So we can plug the square root of y into our function, and by definition of our function, f of the square root of y is the square root of y squared, which equals y. Thus, we've shown, given any element from the codomain, there is an element in the domain that gets mapped to the given codomain element. Hence, f is a surjective or onto function. And remember, in these surjective function proofs, you've got to verify the thing you plug into the function actually is in the domain. Got to make sure to verify that before you plug it into the function. Here is our second example. f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. Its domain is all reals not equal to 0, and its codomain is all real numbers not equal to 1. Every real number not equal to 1 does get hit by this function. It is indeed a surjection. To prove that, we'll need to take an arbitrary element, say y, from the codomain which is the set of real numbers excluding 1. Then, we need to find some domain element x so that f of x is equal to y. By definition of the function, that means that 1 over x plus 1 needs to equal y. Then if we solve for x, we'll have the element we're looking for. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 1 over x equals y minus 1. And then inverting both sides, we have that x equals 1 over y minus 1. This is the domain element we're looking for. Since y is from the set of real numbers excluding 1, that element we just found, 1 over y minus 1, is a real number. We're not going to have a division by 0 since y cannot equal 1. But also, since the numerator is non-zero, not only is this a defined real number, but it's also a defined real number that's not equal to zero. Hence, it's an element of our domain, the real numbers excluding zero. And thus, we can plug this one over y minus one into our function. By definition of our function, f of one over y minus one is one over the input, the input being one over y minus one. And then, of course, we have a plus 1. This is equal to, well, 1 over 1 over y minus 1 is just y minus 1. And then we still have the plus 1 at the end. y minus 1 plus 1, of course, is just y. Thus, we've shown, given any element from the codomain, there is an element in the domain that gets mapped to the given codomain element. Hence, f is a surjective function that maps onto 
the reals excluding 1. Here's our third problem. The function g takes an ordered pair of integers m, n, and sends it to the ordered pair of integers m plus n, m plus 2n. To prove this function is a surjection, we need to take an arbitrary ordered pair, say x, y, from the Cartesian product of integers by integers. Then, we're looking for some domain element, say a, b, so that g of a, b is equal to the ordered pair that we took from the codomain, x, y. By definition of the function, this means the ordered pair a plus b, a plus 2b, needs to equal the ordered pair that we took from the codomain, x, y. This gives us the following system of equations. The x-coordinate, a plus b, has to equal the x-coordinate x, and the y-coordinates also have to be equal. a plus 2b has to equal y. Now, by solving this system, we'll figure out what the a and b are that we need. a plus b equals x, of course, gives us a equals x minus b. We can plug that into this equation to get that x minus b plus 2b must equal y. Negative b plus 2b is just b, and we can subtract the x from both sides of the equation, which leaves us with b equals y minus x. Taking that and putting it back in this equation for a, we get that a is equal to x minus y minus x, and x minus minus x is x plus x, which is 2x. So this just simplifies to 2x minus y. And those are the coordinates that we need in our domain element. We need a to be 2x minus y, and we need b to be y minus x. I'll shrink that work and leave it off to the side because it was a little more involved, so you might want to look at it some more. But let's move on with our proof. We take that arbitrary codomain element, x, y, and then we know 2x minus y is an integer because x and y are integers. 2x minus y, of course, is coming from all the work we just did where we figured out we need 2x minus y to be the first coordinate of our point. But also, y minus x, which we need to be the second coordinate of our point, is an integer because y and x are integers. Together, that means the ordered pair, 2x minus y, y minus x, is an element of our domain. It is an ordered pair of integers. Thus, we can plug it into our function. So, we have f of 2x minus y, y minus x. By definition of our function, that's equal to 2x minus y plus y minus x, and the other coordinate is 2x minus y, plus 2 times y minus x. Simplifying, minus y plus y is 0, and 2x minus x is just x, so the first coordinate is x. The second coordinate, we have 2x minus y plus, distribute the 2, and we get 2y minus 2x. But then, minus y plus 2y is just y, and 2x minus 2x is 0. Thus, the function maps 2x minus y, y minus x to the ordered pair x, y as desired. Since we took an arbitrary element from the codomain and show there's an element from the domain that f maps to that codomain element, we've proven that f is surjective. The function is onto the Cartesian product of integers by integers. For our last example, consider the function h mapping the Cartesian product of integers to the rational numbers, defined as h of mn equals m divided by the absolute value of n plus 1. To prove this function is surjective, we need to take an arbitrary element from the codomain, an arbitrary rational number a over b, and prove there's some domain element that h maps to a over b. You should notice, once we have a over b, we're already pretty close, because if we just plug a, b into h, which is perfectly valid because a and b both have to be integers by definition of a rational number. If we just plug those into h, then what we get is a over the absolute value of b 
plus one. That's not A over B, but it's pretty close. If instead of the absolute value of B, we had B minus one, then B minus one plus one would just leave B, and this would then equal A over B. So maybe instead of plugging in B, we want to plug in B minus one. Uh, the only problem there, though, is the absolute value of B minus one isn't necessarily equal to B minus one. So this might not work out the way we think. However, that's easy to fix because we can just assume, basically, that B is positive. That's because fractions have multiple representations. So if the fraction is positive, then either B is positive or both A and B are negative, in which case we could just imagine the negatives canceling out and re-expressing the fraction so that A and B are both positive. If the fraction is negative, then it must have one factor of negative one. So either B is negative or A is negative, but it doesn't really matter if the top or bottom is negative. So we could just suppose that we're taking a representation of that fraction where the numerator is negative rather than the denominator. So if we take A over B from the rationals with B being greater than zero, this is still an arbitrary rational number. It's not an arbitrary representation. We're specifically taking a representation where the denominator is positive, but that doesn't exclude any rational number. It's still an arbitrary rational number. Now we also know that B is an integer. So if B is positive and an integer, then b minus 1 must be at least 0, since the smallest positive integer is 1. But if b minus 1 is at least 0, then of course the absolute value of b minus 1 is the same as b minus 1. Then we have our proof. The ordered pair, a, b minus 1, is certainly an element of the domain. a is an integer, and b minus 1 is an integer so we can plug it into our function. By definition of our function, h of a b minus one equals a divided by the absolute value of b minus one plus one. But from our previous discussion, we know the absolute value of b minus one is the same as b minus one. So this is equal to a divided by b minus one plus one, which is a over b. Thus, we've taken an arbitrary codomain element and shown there exists an element in the domain that the function maps to the given codomain element. Hence, h is a surjective function. And that's how you prove a function is surjective. Just take an arbitrary element from the codomain and then show there exists some element in the domain that the function maps to the given codomain element. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check the description for links to other relevant lessons. Thanks for watching.